Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today, Peter is going to walk you through some of his favorite things in the studio that he misses the most when we're traveling, uh, mostly because Peter has kind of built this studio himself and he's got a whole bunch of stuff that he's collected that makes his life really easy for him to do his job here. So this is in no particular order, except for the last one is one of the most important for me. But starting at the start is actually the studio space itself. Having my own custom painted cyclorama, a very large white cyclorama, my white wall to concrete floor, and this incredible natural light that I can use at all different times of the day. So the next thing I miss a lot when we're traveling is camera stands. So a lot of people comment on what's that great huge car lifting jack thing. The camera stand, number one, you can't knock it over. It weighs a ton. It's as stable as anything. If I want to lift or lower it, it's this simple. It's just a one hand motion and it's that quick. I want to move it across a bit. It's very, very quick and easy. If I go the same on a normal tripod, number one, they fall over so easy. Cameras, the slightest trip on a cable, you'll pull it over. Number two, to just drop the height, I've got to do all of this and then drop it and oh, it's not quite right. It just takes way too long. Again, this is another one. Now, both my camera stands, the companies that made these, uh, it's not in stock anymore, but it B and H, we'll put a link to where you can look some up. There are still some available. And you'll see again, my weights need adjusting. But again, it's nice and easy to lift and lower it because it's counterbalanced. So number two, uh, light stands. Now I much prefer the C-stand. Uh, again, especially with articulated arm on it and a locking arm. So the ones that are just friction aren't as good. The locking ones, you only have to just tighten a little bit. Oh, it's not tighten, a little bit and they lock over those. So the floor space is about the same. You do have to put a weight on these. But the difference is the maximum height of that to the maximum height of this is majorly different. Number one, like say, a lot of them come with this um, articulated arm. But if I just show you how high I can put a light just off the standard one, and then the opposite is how low I can put a light off this one stand. All right, so you get that much difference to be able to set up your heights and everything. So I love the C stands and a lot of studios I find don't have them, especially in America. Next thing which we find very few studios have are the V flats. Simple little V flats that self stand on their own. I use things like V flats and scrims all the time to modify light, modify natural light and modify flash and constant light. And I just love these things so much. It's that final shaping I can do with them, which I can't do with soft boxes and so forth. The next thing, which again, we struggle a lot when we're overseas, um, is the mega boom. Now I know they're expensive. Um, I think in Australia, it's about two and a half thousand Aussie, maybe it's most, most likely, 1500 US for just that arm and $1,500 for the legs. So they get very expensive, but the time it saves me, they're incredible. How quick and easy I can just change direction of light. I can rotate it around, lift it up and down, lift it up this way and down. It makes it so much easier when I'm fine tuning rather than have to climb up a ladder and adjust things that are big and heavy. So with those, they're a lifesaver for me. Next is rolly walls. So walls on wheels. So I paint different colors. So it's black both sides of this one. And you'll see it's white on the inside of this. I've got eight walls in this tiny corner. So when that's pushed in, they don't take up any room in the studio and it makes it really quick and easy to drop a different color or different type of background or paint a background for a client. We can just paint it and then wheel it in. Talking about wheels, everything on wheels. So all my light trolleys, all my, all my trolleys, the stand trolleys, you'll see everything around here is on wheels, our desks are on wheels. It just makes it so much easier. We can move whole sets very quick and easy to different places. The next is wardrobe. 
So the benefit of what we have now, if the model turns up and we don't quite have the right look, we've got our everyday sort of test shoot wardrobe. Then in here we have just full of hats, shoes, gloves, everything. And just that can be used to finish off a shoot when you just don't have something that is what you're looking for. And based off our cover image, you'll see the shoes. They came out of my wardrobe. Then props. And in my prop room, again, because it's here, I've got all stupid things like a crutch and baseball bat. Just anything and the whole reason of the click bait photo, there's why we put the photo up on the cover because it's an axe. It was just like, hey Shay, this photo shit's just not working. It needs some stupid dumb prop that makes no sense. We grabbed the axe and it finished off the picture. Great. You'll see things like the chainsaw that's sitting down there. That's a prop. Doesn't work, hasn't worked in 10 years, but that's just a prop I use for different things to finish off a shoot, add something extra to the shoot that needed some type of lift or something that made it not like an AI shoot. And the most important thing in my studio is a beck. Every studio needs a beck just to get rid of your old wine that's gone off <laughs> for no other reason. So we hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you want to see a full studio walkthrough, I will pop up an old video we have of that now.